All right, we are rolling. Welcome. Good afternoon, everybody, to the April, it's almost May, uh, meeting, photographers meeting, Wisconsin photographers meeting. A um, couple of presentations today are going to be uh, talk about Al Fredrickson and uh, uh, his career, and then we're going to talk about uh, Steve Apps and his somewhat lengthy career. Would you say call it length lengthy, Steve? Yeah, it's I guess yeah, it feels like it. <laughs> You're still cutting your teeth though. You got you got a few yeah. years left, I think. Still learning, you know. I'm not not quite right. the Joe Jackson level yet, but I'm fucking okay. well. Nobody's at that. Nobody's at that level, right, Joe? Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's get started. Uh, if uh, Mark, if you would like to start out, and we'll uh, do a little talk about Al and and his life and and his career. Well, we're going to honor Al today, the first part of the program, and I'm going to defer quickly and shortly to Dave, one of his brothers who's uh, joining us. One of the things, uh, we have the obituary that Steve said, shared with us uh, and other people did, but what I found interesting that I learned at uh, the visitation from Dave is that uh, Tremper High School in Kenosha apparently must have had quite a journalism department, student newspaper, whatever. But in addition to Al and his distinguished career, Tom Delaney, the Waukegan News son, and Jeff Topping, who uh, was in Phoenix, I think, with the AP, uh, were also contemporaries of Al's. And uh, it must have been really qu quite an atmosphere there. And Steve is going to show us some pictures. And I'm going to turn this over to Dave. Okay, well, um, I'm sitting outside in an RV dealership. There's uh, announcements going on in back of me. So if that becomes distracting, obviously I don't want to mute now, but if I need to mute, let me know. Um, it's interesting that you mention uh, both Jeff and Tom because I have a fairly close personal tie to both. Tom actually sent me a condolence card yesterday from his new home in Arizona where he and his wife recently moved. Um, and Jeff uh, was one of uh, myself and three others that went off to college our first year at UW River Falls. Jeff to play football and myself to run cross country. So I know both those both those individuals fairly well and actually was surprised uh, in Green Bay to see Tom on the sidelines. I didn't know Tom was a photojournalist and the same thing with Jeff. I only became aware of that later in life that he that he went down that path. Last time I was on, uh, at your meeting was one month ago, your, your March meeting. And actually that, that was the day I had gone down to Waukesha to take Al to get his J&J uh, &J coronavirus vaccine, which uh, right there attests to the fact that Al, wasn't, Al didn't give up uh, until he had to give up at the very end. Um, Al, well, I, I, I know from sitting there with him, he wasn't really participating for the most part in that meeting. Uh, trust me that he was actively listening to everything that was going on. And, uh, and at that point still had full intents of uh, delivering a presentation to, on this, regarding his space shuttle photography to you guys at some point. Um, that was on a Friday. The following Monday, Al was admitted to the hospital with pneumonia. He was in the hospital for eight days, returned home the following Monday, April 6th, and died on April 9th. And it was only, it was only at the very end when he came home on that Monday that Al resigned himself to the fact that his disease was terminal. Um, so it's been a, been a tough, uh, tough goal for the family, but uh, myself and my Al's two other brothers three, including myself, were with him at his bedside at the final, at the, in the final moments. And he was at home and Al was very, 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 very adamant that he didn't want to be anywhere but home. So we were glad that he was able to have that, uh, that preference come true. Um, Dave, help. Dave, you mentioned, yes. you know, your brothers, but also bring your father into this because I would as a PSA uh, national meeting some years ago, giving a talk, and I was surprised to run into your father, who I didn't realize is an active member of PSA, and uh, st 
Stu is an active photographer. Yeah, and maybe my that got Al on his career path. Yeah, my parents, my my father has always throughout my all of my awareness has been an active hobbyist, uh, and as you mentioned, stereo was kind of his niche that he pursued, <coughs> and he's uh, he's. I don't know what we're going to do with all of his collection of uh, medals, etc., trophies from from his photographic entries in in the three D category, but he he was he's been very accomplished in his three D photography pursuit. Pursuit. He goes to uh, and I think he's he's still and he didn't go last year because of the fact that the convention wasn't held. But he still goes to PSA convention. He still goes to stereo photographers conventions and even as he approaches 95 years old he fully intends to sign up and go to those meetings so, uh, my mother became a hobbyist probably because of dad's interest and all of us were brought up with the uh, hallway bathroom being a dark room and we all had to learn <laughs> how to how to use the enlarger and how to how to put the put the prints through the chemicals and watch watch the images unfold so photography was something that was ingrained in all of us and obviously with Al it really really took. Um, I, I do want to let you know and thank you for um, for including Al in these monthly meetings. Uh, I know they were very important to him and uh, he again right up until the end that was the one thing that he that he truly would make sure he participated in or was at least actively listening to. Dave, do you have a memory of Al excitedly coming in the house and saying, I just got my first published photo uh, or I can't believe somebody's paying me to do what I love so much and you know, I, that that was an L to express that uh, that sort of emotion. So I, I don't remember it. I, I remember myself that type of uh, that type of feeling and emotion. Um, but but with Al, he played it pretty close to the vest. But one I do want to mention too. One of my regrets is while Al gave me opportunities to shoot with him over the years, I never followed through or took him up on his invitation to go to a space shuttle launch. And mm. that's one of those things that uh, can't, can't change, but I regret not having done so. That's Al on the roof of the 57 Plymouth. Which my dad says with a horrible car. <laughs> I don't know if you can see the, the, the pictures that are on the screen now, but uh, these are some, we're looking at some pictures of Al's uh, space shuttle photos. Dave, when he went to the Cape to photograph the shuttle launches, was he on his own or was he on assignment from Reuters or somebody else? He was, yeah, he was generally just uh, freelancing, sending photos on spec. He got, okay. he developed a good re relationship with Joe Skipper, who was the Reuter. I think Joe Skipper was the Reuters guy down in that area. So he would hook up with uh, Joe and, and they would work together on the launches, but he, no, he was, he was, he was on his own dime and just uh, doing it because he, he loved the two things he loved most were probably happening at that time. And that was the space shuttle photography as well as, uh, as well as the, uh, well, Photography and the space shuttle. He, as a, I remember when we were very young, Al developed an interest in the space program, probably starting with uh, John Glenn and going from there. Didn't your father have a specialty in astrophotography? Or am I, I wrong about that? Run that by me again. Didn't your father have a specialty in astrophotography photographs of uh, uh, no, stars? No, he, no, I'm sorry, he I'm didn't, wrong. But he was a physicist by by occupation, so you could have extrapolated from that that maybe that would have been his photographic direction. Well, I was looking you, forward. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, Mark. Do you have any favorite photo or photos of Al's? Oh, uh, probably, you know, I've got a lot of uh, favorite photos. Uh, Al would uh, share with me 
all of the Packer image he was images he took, especially in the years where I was no longer working with them at the games. And so I, I saved all of those and I'm, I'm glad I did. They're coming in handy now because they're actually uh, a, uh, a, high, a high school, grade school friend of his who also was in journalism, Walt Albrecht is, uh, and now he's a marketing guy, but he's putting together a, uh, a photo, uh, a, 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 trying to think of the right words, but anyway, a presentation of Al's photos that will be taking place at the Kenosha Historical Museum starting July 30th. So oh, I've nice. been digging through my archives and, and getting a lot of those photos and they, they plan for it to be a traveling exhibit mounted on poster boards. So they're gonna take it to Tremper High School to actually to his grade school, Prairie Lane, and then to UW Parkside. Those are some of the places that are already on their radar in terms of where they want that exhibit to travel to. Wonderful. Dave, if you could let me know, um, uh, if you could email me when, when those are going to be on display and people can attend those, um, I, I will I'll, I'll, let everybody know. I'll share that information. Absolutely. Terrific. In, in doing a little research on Al, I, I Googled you know, some information on him and to see the tributes that people were paying to him online um, was pretty remarkable. And it, it was a testament to see, you know, how, how well liked he was. Um, and I'll, I, I was really looking forward to his presentation and I'm, I'm sorry that we're not going to get to hear it now. Yeah, there was actually uh, one thing that you won't find online that I haven't seen yet, but uh, the Waukesha Freeman did a, uh, the day before his memorial service, which would have been Friday, the 12th, I, I guess would have been the date, but anyway, it was uh, basically a front page article showing the picture, the selfie of him and Clint, Bill Clinton on the front mm -hmm. page, along with the article, and it continued on the back page with the shuttle shot. So I do have a I do have a printed copy coming to me, but uh, when I try to go online to the Waukesha Freeman, they want me to subscribe. So I'm going to wait yeah. for the free mm. copy to arrive. Yeah. <laughs> and, that, and that way I'm like Al. <laughs> Maybe you can uh, snap a picture of it with your phone and uh, share it with us. We could see that selfie. I, I, will, I will do that as well. Absolutely. <laughs> Is that on the campaign trail or when he was speaking as president or? You know, I don't remember the circumstances, but uh, Al took his long arm with his, uh, with, his, with his cannon and I assume he had a cannon or an icon, but anyway, a heavy camera body and he snapped what looks like two really good buddies uh, sharing a laugh. Nice, nice. Well, thank you very much for sharing Al's career, your remembrances. Uh, I know it's not easy for you, but uh, we appreciate it. We're glad we had Al when we did. Yep, thank you. Thanks for, thanks for remembering him today. And uh, I will hang on, but let me know again if I need to mute because I, I, re I recognize Steve Apps from the sidelines, so I'm interested in his presentation and hearing about all those NFL <laughs> Hall of Fame photo awards. Yes, and there were a few. Um, and in fact, in fact, Dave, what I, if if you don't if you don't have the control there to to mute, um, I can actually re remotely mute you too. So. Um, you would just okay. need to unmute if you would like to say something, but yeah, we are getting quite a few of the announcements in there. So, okay. Yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah. And, uh, no, no worries. Just, and, and I won't be home until I won't get that paper out until June, uh, sometime early June when I'm back home, we're just leaving on a trip. So, uh, <coughs> don't, don't think the fact that it doesn't get to you soon means I forgot. Yep. No, okay. no problem at all. Well, thanks for joining us and, and okay. sharing that. And, um, and we will look forward to to getting that information when you get back. Thank you. All right, and with that, we, we can move on to our next presenter, and that's gonna be uh, Steve Apps. And Steve is joining us from uh, his office in Madison, I believe, right, Steve? Yep, North Side. North Side, okay. Steve was, um, I don't know if you, if you got my uh, email, you, you saw some of the, awards and things that Steve has gotten over the years, um, 35 plus years. Did you, have you got an accurate count on that yet? 
Yeah, it would have, would have been uh, 35 years and four months and a few days. So <laughs> Okay. And I think I said you had uh, retired for the second time, and that may not be the case, correct? I was, I was laid off for 10 weeks back in okay. 2017. I went from being the chief photographer slash photo editor to being nothing. <laughs> then they hired me back as a lowly staff photographer again. 10 weeks later. So I had decided that uh, I wasn't ready just to hang out and I still enjoyed taking photos. So yeah, we noticed. We see, <laughs> we see a lot of a lot of cool stuff coming across. Um, so he's got a lot of a lot of awards and things and uh, accolades and uh, you, you probably already know who he is. Um, but I will post a link to his website um, when I send out the new, the notes on the meeting and uh, you can definitely look at his stuff there and read all about Steve, but thank you for joining us. And with that, I will uh, turn the meeting over to you, Mr. Apps. Let's see. All right. So I just have to share the screen. Yep. Stop. Make host. There you go. I, I'm going to inter interrupt for a second here. Sorry, all my, I had a computer fail recently and my, uh, uh, new setup doesn't temporary setup doesn't have a video camera, so you can see my my blank screen there. Yep. Thank you, uh, Steve. You should have uh, you should have the meeting now. At this yeah, point. You I'm can trying share. to see how the share. It says uh, open system preference. Oh gosh, security feature grant access. Hold on, I'm sorry. About oh that. yeah, no, that's okay. Take your time. There's a, that first initial setup is take a couple of, you got to change a couple of things on the, you're using a Mac. Yeah. For the permissions. Maybe so you, Jackson will sing for us. Yeah, I was yeah. just going to say. All right, Joe. <laughs> I wanted to say, and Andy never looks so good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Definitely is good. That's kind of, we could do this later. I got to have a beer, but it's a little too early to have a beer. Never too early to have a beer. <laughs> well, put some, put some clothes on at least, Andy. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> have a beer at breakfast sometimes. Why can't I see Andy? Oh, do you, oh, you don't have a camera. That's why. I, no, that's, I do not have a, I had a. <laughs> All right. I, I finally got it. Okay. Uh, can you see a picture of a new Yeah. I All do. right. I'm just going to keep this part on for a second while I do a little short backstory. I was pretty much, I was kind of a lucky one because I knew that I wanted to be a photographer from a very early age. I grew up in Madison. I was a paper boy for the Capitol Times. And I also, uh, delivered the Sunday Wisconsin State Journal. And I remember just slowly walking Sunday mornings, looking through the newspaper and looking at Roger Turner's photographs. This is, you know, so Roger Turner, I, I used to tell him this all the time and he would become very embarrassed by this, but how inf influential he was for me to become a photographer. And I was always late on my paper route because I was reading the newspaper instead of delivering it. And then I remember in fifth grade, I was in uh, uh, Midville Elementary School. We always had these class projects. And uh, we called up the newspaper to try to get them to you know, make a photograph. And I think one of them, we collected you know, so many pennies, 10,000 pennies for, a, for a, some charity. And Roger Turner showed up. And I remember being starstruck. Oh. Here's Roger Turner. It's Roger Turner. And <laughs> uh, he acted so professional. I mean. If I was sent to an assignment to photograph with the school kids with pennies, I'd be like, are you kidding me? What did I do? I mean, I mean, this, that's a crappy assignment. But Roger took this thing. He made every one of these kids, myself included, seem like we were the most important people in the world. And it, it was just, I'm thinking, this is a great job. And so that's fifth grade. And uh, in eighth grade, I see Bruce Fritz is here. I'm going to embarrass him for him for a moment also, because uh, in eighth grade, I had to do a 
do a job sharing type thing or a, you know, in morning, I suppose I was, I spent time with my father who was a professor at the UW and I realized that's the worst possible job in the world. I go, how could you, it's so boring. And the afternoon I hung out with Bruce Fritz as he was a Capital Times photographer. And I was thinking, this is it. This is a great profession. He was driving around in a clunky van with cameras hanging off of him everywhere. And I was like, oh, this is, this is perfect. So by eighth grade, I'm going, okay, I'm gonna be a photographer. High school, Madison West, I started taking some pictures there and I had saved up for my paper route and shoveling to buy a Canon AE-1. And then I ended up uh, knowing that there's people said, you have to have a Nikon. Nikon now, there is a professional camera. So I ended up buying a, a Nikon F2A from the camera company, cost me about 570 bucks. And it was another year before I could afford a, even a lens for it. So I used to just carry it around with me and sniff it because it was, uh, <laughs> because it smelled good and I, I just couldn't afford a lens. But uh, this first picture here is, uh, it's just, uh, is a, it's my first job out of college. I went to Winona State. I kind of talked my way into their photo editor, Rob Orcutt. He said, sure, you can cover uh, Packers. And this is the first Packer game I ever covered. I was totally over my head. I had no idea what I was doing. And you can, I, luckily I did get the ball in this picture. This is, you know, September 8th, 1986. Officially my Packer football kind of stuff began. And you know, I, I just drew other pictures. I took, uh, this is the Minnesota game, which I thought this was a pretty good picture for manual focus. But my whole time pretty much in Wausau, I, I, I didn't spend, you know, it's like, I, I, as soon as I got there, I decided I wanted to leave. I was, you know, I was getting itchy. I knew that I had to move from paper to paper to you know, kind of get where I wanted to be. And what I wanted, to, you know, originally wanted to come to the state journal. And I, right after I graduated from college, I, uh, I went back to the state journal because there was a photo opening there. And I talked to Roger Turner again and, uh, you know, I showed him my portfolio and it was my college portfolio and it was pretty bad. I mean, my portfolio was bad, but Roger was very nice. He looked at it and he was telling me, you know, that's a few good pictures here, but uh, he was encouraging and on my way to Wausau. And then after about a year Wausau, I moved to Florida <laughs> where I could live on my beach dream. So this is my selfie of my, uh, it's front of my Florida condominium, which was pretty good times because I started out the Sarasota Herald Tribune and the Port Charlotte Bureau. And uh, in Charlotte County, Florida, which is about an hour south of Sarasota, that medium age at the time was five and a half. So I was you know, in my early twenties, surrounded by a bunch of old people. And the good thing about all these old people in the condos, they all kind of, they kind of fought over me about who, I don't know what to me dinner for the night. So I had, had three meals <laughs> everywhere. Grandma. And also in uh, Port Charlotte, all we had to do is just look for future pictures. So anything we could do is just shoot future photos. And I, at this location, you know, I really developed my eye to really photograph anything just because you had to do photos of, you know, every day we had to come up with two, two future pictures. And so we're just photographing anything. If there's a person outside, we're making photographs of it. It's just not all of them are very good. Most of them probably aren't, but it's just, it was kind of a kind of a thing that you just had to do it. So we just, you know, we, we did all black and white and then we shot, if we did, if in the Port Charlotte if we shot color, we had to shoot uh, slide film. And there was, you know, the crime stuff, which I always thought, you know, looking back at this picture, it looks like an old 80s movie or something, just pulling a body out of the water. It's just, it's just, it was just, I still laughed at that. And also, I used to always at that age, I slept with a police scanner on, which for whatever reason I cannot, I was just a news junkie. So any type of, you know, arrest or anything, fire, I was out the door. And this is the case of a couple of kids who ended up, uh, you know, stealing a car and I hopped out of my car and, you know, started taking pictures. And I think if you kind of did that nowadays, you'd probably get shot. But uh, back then, they're, they're, it was a small enough community that they expected to see me around. 
got to do a few things that are a little bit interesting. This was the, the riots in Miami in the late 90s. I don't, unfortunately, I don't have a lot of my negatives from that because I had to work out of the AP Miami office and I was so exhausted. I lost my negative. I left my negatives there when I flew back and it was like, ah, oh, crap. So, but that was some interesting experiences. You know, more interesting, any type of feature picture. Santa's, you know, waiting for some kids to show up that never, never showed up. You know, this is how, this is how we transmitted our pictures. You know, just, we had to write a, a little, little caption on it and then just, uh, you know, sent it up to the main office. And as you can see, I misspelled plans to begin with. So we had to use the old, you know, white out. And all I can say is that people nowadays have things so much easier with the computers and you can just backtrack. You don't have to type everything out. You know, features, anywhere features, just, <laughs> shuffleboard and these old guys that are uh, definitely look pretty bored. Occasionally had some interesting assignments when the, what, you know, air shows come through town. You know, then after three years in Sarasota or Port Charlotte office, I moved up to the main office where the feature pictures were a little bit different. You know, anytime there was a really boring, slow day, we ended up, I just head to the beach, but just, you know, try to make a photograph. This picture's, you know, not the greatest. You know, this picture was a little bit better. And so it just, it was just a, it was a great lifestyle, just hanging out in the warm weather and shooting some offshore boat, offshore boat racing. Occasional, uh, you know, vice president comes by to feed the manatees. And flooding, that, that always happened in Florida. And there's a kind of an interesting story about this at this time was it had rained for two days straight over four, five, six inches. And so there was localized flooding. And so I knew that I had to go back there the next day. So I took out my map, you know, try to find a spot where it hit some high ground. And I had a Volkswagen Jetta. So it wasn't a very big, you know, high car. <clears throat> and I found it, you know, I drove this uh, subdivision. I parked on top of a hill. And so then I went and photographed the flooding and it decided I had to get my film back to the office. So I walked up to my car and I, I started laughing, thinking, hey, it's, it's great because my car is dry, but not realizing that I was on a hill, which means I have to go down the hill through the water to get back to the road. So always somebody that uh, didn't want to miss my deadline. I started driving through the water and it's, you know, it's, it's over the hood in the car. Still, I mean, it's, it's completely an idiot here. It's completely just moving. It's still working. And all of a sudden it quit. And it's like, oh, great. And I, a fire truck came by and then laying over and the wave of the fire truck came and pushed my car. I mean, like I was, I was a boat now, so I was no longer a car. And then I, I kind of waited. And, you know, I usually have some pretty good luck. And a tow truck guy happened to come by and he pushed me off the high ground where I had to uh, leave my car. And then I just walked in the five miles to the paper you know, with other cars that this is not my car, but this is uh, obviously, but there are other photographs, you know, that I can make on the way back to the paper. And there's, you know, snakes floating by me, ant hills of, you know, fire, fire ants floating by me. And I'm going, this just, I'm thinking, think of all the sludge that's in this water. And it was like, ah, I try not to think about that, especially all the stuff under the water that I can't, that I can't see. At Queso, we have some funny stuff like, you know, an orange truck breaks in half. And of course, I, I was much for selfies. So I had another photographer from the paper showed up. So I was able to have him snap a picture of me with uh, the orange truck. And then, you know, interesting dolphin riding wave. I was out for an early morning uh, shark fishing thing. So those are type of stories you can't do in Wisconsin. I, Occasionally I had to do for the future department some model type stuff. I was horrible at it. It just so I tried by, you know, lighting stuff and bring out some studio type lighting at the beach. Never very good at it. But then again, spring training was something that, you know, happened in Florida. And Sarasota had the, at the time they had the Chicago White Sox. So I got to cover a lot of a lot of baseball. I got a pass that allowed me to uh, go to any of the spring training games all over the state. And I took advantage of that. You know, this was uh, uh, 
national anthem, which I think a picture like this nowadays would get there, would have a little bit of social backlash of that with the uh, yawning and the blowing of the bubble during the national anthem. They got Frank Thomas, who was a big superstar. You know, this was either his rookie season or the year after that. Fans are just swapping around him to try to get you know autographs. Former manager Billy Martin mm -hmm. sitting on a, you know, a chair waiting you know, before a preseason game. Carlton Fisk, you know, warming up. He was an old veteran, a catcher. And the thing I always liked about spring training was that you had incredible access. They let you, you know, pretty much go wherever you wanted to. You know, the fans look for innovative ways to try to get some autographs. So they would just, you know, they'd call this autograph uh, fishing. They just throw, put, a, put a card on a thing, throw it over the top, and, you know, see who, who would sign it. So it was kind of a, a fun way to get an autograph. Also, Bo Jackson, you know, he was a big superstar then. And this was a picture that, uh, that it was kind of, was a little bit of controversy around this picture because he had sh showed up to spring training a few days early to get into batting practice. And he was hoping that he could kind of go into the, under the radar for a few days before spring training officially opened. And I was just wandering around looking for future pictures and I walked right into the, the complex and I look over and there's Bo Jackson taking batting practice. And I remember him looking at me and going, oh shit, you know, <laughs> because it's like, he knew that to, you know, I was obviously with the newspaper because of my cameras, took some pictures, sent it to the wire. Next thing you know, practice was filled the next day. So everybody looking to get pictures of Bo Jackson again. You know, and he was always very kind of controversial, but fans loved him. Always looking for, you know, autographs. I just picture Barry Bonds before he went on steroids and, and just very skinny back then. And this is a very lousy football picture. Going back to the Super Bowl I covered in Miami, this you can see the low light, horrible film, you know, graininess of everything. And I, this is the first Super Bowl I covered. And I can honestly say I really did not know what I was doing. I, it's just, I, football is something that takes a while to figure out how to cover it. And as Dan Powers knows that it just, he wasn't the best Packer photographer, sports photographer the first few years either. You just kind of have to figure out how to do things. And I, you know, I've made a few pictures, but you know, they're not, they're not great. You know, Jerry Rice on the sidelines, but you know, at least at the start, then I could say that I went to a, you know, a Super Bowl. And this is a picture of Brett Favre that I took while working in the paper in uh, Florida. And it happened to be the first game that Brett Favre ever played for the Green Bay Packers. So this, I could see I photographed his first game and his last game. He came in at halftime against Tampa Bay and played horribly. This, I think, the game that he even uh, completed a pass to himself. <laughs> and then a couple of the stories that I, interesting stories in uh, March of 91, the Saratoga Battle Group came back to Mayport <clears throat> after the Gulf War. They sent me up there, so I was able to get some interesting pictures from that. Just, uh, you know, it was a really long day, but it, <clears throat> but it was kind of interesting. And it was, it was, it was one of those times that there's so many photographs. You almost, when it was time to leave, I just had to kind of close my eyes and turn around because it was just everywhere you looked, there was a photograph. And I was kind of running out of film. And it's so I, I wanted to save something later in the day. You know, people getting off and it, the pictures were, Interesting photos and everything, you know, everywhere you look, there was a picture. And that night I ended up uh, heading to the, finding a group of sailors, I guess these were Marines, and uh, just spending some time with them out in the town as our first night back in, you know, in Mayport. And so it's just the, the nightlife and, you know, drinking and listening to the heavy metal bands. And then this guy finds his, I think this was his girlfriend that showed up. So it's a nice little moment there. And then another big event happened in August uh, 92, Hurricane Andrew came through. And I was, uh, was we had our staff set up to go to different locations. And uh, my, my assignment was to go to, to Naples. And I ended up driving down to Naples the day of, and it, uh, it was, wasn't as bad since the hurricane hit in uh, in Homestead. That was where the Cat Five 
you know, hit the United States. And so then luckily, what ha- also I was driving my same uh, Volkswagen Jetta and I had a battery issue. And at one point I said, stop to get some pictures and my, I could not start my car again. And I'm like, oh crap, here I am in a hurricane or a few hours after a hurricane, I can't get my, start, my car started. But my luck held and not five minutes later, a tow truck came around the corner out of nowhere. He gave me a jump. And from that moment, I never turned my car off again. I just kept it on until I, you know, because I, I did not have to, didn't want to worry about having to start it up again. And uh, this was a few days later when they sent, they went back down to, you know, cover type of stuff. I always had my Leica with me. I used, I was using Canons and Nikons and, but I always had, I think I was using Nikons, but I always had at least one Leica with me. And, uh, you know, photographing some of the damage, women looking through her, uh, her destroyed home. And then after, in about a week, they had set up tent camps all around Homestead where people who were displaced by the hurricane. And we spent some time there just photographing the residents. The National Guard was called in to help with the situation. People doing stuff to you know, try to stay clean. Supplies of clothes, which seems kind of, you know, just kind of wasteful, just throwing them on the side of the road like that. And, you know, then president or candidate Bill Clinton down there campaigning. So I had to make some photographs of that. Then, uh, you know, relief efforts. Spending a night with, uh, going around with uh, some of the security people. This was an old McDonald's or a, a McDonald's was destroyed by the hurricane, but they set up a tent eating facility in the spot of the former McDonald's. And you can see the drive through sign is kind of still kind of hanging on there. And it's thought that was kind of funny. And that, you know, going around checking people for certain things. And uh, another thing that uh, if anybody, you know, who's done this type of work, everybody remembers one of those assignments they get that, you know, like, are you kidding me? Do I really have to do this assignment? And I'm kind of leading up to the photograph here, but uh, this was the assignment I got from my photo editor. He read the assignment to me, and then he started laughing because he knew it. And uh, as you can see, the assignment was men wearing T-back swimming suits, a new trend. And it was like, oh my gosh, how do I photograph this, you know, with, in a dignified way? And I'm thinking, okay, long lines, but still I have to go up and talk to people. So I'm walking around with my camera lens at the beach, trying to, hi, sir, do you mind, we're doing a story. Do you mind if I take a picture of you and your tea bag? Oh, I mean, it's just, oh my gosh, it's just so embarrassed. But this guy was had a good sport about it and he let me do it. And, and so that's probably the most uncomfortable assignment I've ever had. <laughs> then I was, went to the Post Crescent in 93, photo editor Dwight Nail is uh, to the left there. This is uh, at EAA, which we covered, I covered for five years, which was a lot of fun. One of the big things that happened in, uh, when I was working for the Post or Post Crescent was uh, October 30th, 1993, Wisconsin beat Michigan uh, 13 to 10. And the students started to celebrate by trying to rush the field. And uh, 73 students were injured because what happened was they started coming down from the top, piling on top of each other. And the people on top didn't know it. And so it was a huge struggle. And it was just, it was one of those horrible situations that people were getting crushed. And uh, all I, I was stuck getting, not, you know, being that I was tall, I, with my, at least my head was above everything, but there was, it was a pretty intense situation. You know, people were stuck and, you know, they're trying to drag people off each other. And it was highly emotional. And there was a time that uh, police, I was trying to make some photographs, a police officer came up to me and just smashed, hit me really hard swore at me and get the uh, blank, blank, blank out of here type of stuff. And he was just not doing anybody any good. He was totally out of his element here. And I just went around and continued to make photographs from a different, you know, different area. But it was, uh, it was pretty interesting situation. And that was, uh, luckily through all this stuff, there were a few people that uh, were pulses and non-breathing during the situation. But uh, because of the, 
the, the medical facilities and medical people on scene, nobody ended up losing their life. But you can kind of see how just it crushed everything. And there's an interesting story about this picture. What you know, this is a, you know, one of the pictures that ran in the Post Crescent. And I put this photograph on the wire on uh, Saturday night. And uh, one of the things I did not know at the time, but Sports Illustrated had a photographer at this game, but the photographer left 10 minutes early because they wanted to get their film back for deadlines. So they did not have any pictures of the stampede. And I had put this picture on AP. And I got a call from uh, Sports Illustrated Sunday night saying that they want to use this picture in a full page on Sports Illustrated. They were going to have somebody fly from New York to Milwaukee on Monday morning and drive up to Appleton and pick up my negative and fly back to New York with it, ask if that'd be okay. I'm like, sure, that'd be okay. And so that picture ended up being a full page in Sports Illustrated. And I can say it's my first full page in Sports Illustrated, but I can probably also say it's my last full page picture in Sports Illustrated. But uh, this picture was also in their photo of the year section that year too. Another big story in, uh, in uh, uh, Appleton was in uh, the Wyawigga train wreck. It was March 6, 1996. It, uh, something like 81 cars derailed shortly after, you know, after 6 a.m. and uh, started this fire. And the concern at the time, I drove from Appleton to the scene and shortly after making this photograph, I was, you know, the, all of a sudden, all these fire department people, emergency personnel got into their vehicles and took off. And it's, they were pushing me back and, all, and I didn't know it at the time, but I later learned that they were concerned that of a term called the blevy, which I had not heard at the time being that after these cars, they had liquid, uh, liquid petroleum gas and also sodium hydroxide in some of them. They were saying that if you heat it to a certain point, a bloody would happen, which means you know, a huge explosion. And the post crest at the time ran a map and I looked where I was standing and what would have happened to me. And I had learned, I, prob I might have died, might have not, but definitely would have had lung damage, definitely would have had hearing damage. And so it's like, God, I'm glad that didn't, didn't you know, happen because I didn't want to blow up like that. And uh, that was kind of, a, it was a long event. And one of the interesting things that happened with this that uh, when they evacuated the town, people had to leave extremely quickly. And so they were not allowed to take their pets with them. And so people complained, they kept trying to sneak in. And so the National Guard was authorized by Governor Tommy Thompson to try a pet rescue. And so they'd put, you know, flak jackets on, on residents, have helmets, and they'd go in armored personnel carriers to rescue their pets. And they, originally, they did not want the media on this because they were worried that these people would come home to all their dead pets, and they didn't want the publicity for that. So it was, my, it was myself and a few other members of the media. We just complained and complained. You've got it. You have to let us do it. You have to let us do this. And finally they did. So it made some, some interesting pictures of, uh, you know, people with their pets after, you know. And I think at the time, a couple of these pictures were in the, the uh, Washington Post and also the New York Times. And that, you know, shows some of the after effects of everything. And then also Post Crescent, I kind of started my football, more heavy Packer stuff. This is NFC Championship game in Green Bay, muddy conditions. Dan Powers has a, we have a really interesting picture of our, our staff after this when we were all soaked. This is winning the NFC championship game. And at this point I was hired uh, to go to the state journal. So the Packers are going to the Super Bowl in New Orleans. And they asked me if I wanted to go to the Super Bowl. I said, no, that's okay. Since I'm going to the post, I'm going to uh, the state journal a couple of days after the Super Bowl. So Dan Powers took my place. So I'm guessing, probably, you know, that was his first chance to go to a Super Bowl. I and then at, the, at the State Journal, you know, feature type stuff, news situations, you know, every type of news, news type stuff, you know, chasing away the raccoons at the golf, you know, fish jumping the dams, casual fires, 
a few interesting assignments, you know, portraits of the ladies and her flags. I'd also work in a night shift. You got back then we used to photograph concerts, you know, Ray Charles, B.B. King, Bruce Springsteen, you know, Bono at the Camp Randall Stadium with the big concerts. And then, you know, portraits of women who turn 100 who maybe don't want to have their photograph taken. Occasional, you know, weather features, which are always happen, huge snowstorms. Also, you know, moving a house. And then a house that has uh, fallen in Lake Delton after the dam breaks and all the water runs out, eroding the hillside. And this is the chance, this was a case that I'm sitting in my office. I get a call from then photo editor Sarah Tu saying, got to get up to Lake Delton. You, you know, it's uh, the lake is draining. So they booked me a, you know, a flight from uh, Maury Field, hopped an airplane, and drove up there. And, you know, this is Tommy Bartlett's water show without uh, any water. And more, you know, fire type stuff. This was an interesting thing that I got to do that uh, MATC had a firefighter training that it was a flashover simulator. So I got to dress up into my, you know, up in fire gear and uh, sit there as, you know, they simulate this flashover. And I remember I was using my Nikon cameras and it was so hot when I, got out of there, I couldn't even touch the cameras. And I'm really surprised that they worked. And there's old Hank Ashalik in the left there. And there's my, uh, perf my full, I guess I was using Canon cameras then. And there's my firefighter poles. You know, Stoughton Tornadoes, another case that I was at, a, I was getting ready to go have a beer. I got a phone call, got to get it to the airport. Uh, there's been a tornado, we need to get you up there before the you know, sun goes down. Then the next day, photographing that scene. Protests in Madison, 2011. It's all part of the Madison culture. There's close to 100,000 people on the Capitol Square for this. This was an active shooting situation a few years ago. So spot news never ends. Protests just last summer, even, you know, May 30th. You know, this is, I. <laughs> The last time I hope I get tear gas because it's, uh, I forgot that I don't like to get tear gas. I remember that uh, my wife dropped me off there because I didn't want to worry about parking. And when she picked me up afterwards, she goes, you stink. Because <laughs> I smell it. I had that tear gas smell to everything. There's some photographs of that situation. Then, you know, after the facts, this is uh, one of the wind one or two window windows being broken, this uh, local restaurant. So this is a reflection in the window. More sports besides football, you know, got the Madison Ironman, PGA Championship, Don, John Daly blasting out of a sand trap. Hockey, I always like to see this one. How many people can you fit into a net? This is kind of like the old clown college thing. And then the reason I was hired to come to the state journal in 97 was uh, to cover the Green Bay Packers. This is one of the early years. Like I said, the first one of the first pictures of Brett Favre. And I photographed, like I said, his first game. And the thing that his dad could tell you, Brett Favre is fun to photograph because he, he has so many ex different expressions. He's just goofy. This was after Tampa, after, uh, the Packers, the 1997 after they won, uh, and they're, I guess they won the division title after this game. And I was looking for an interesting angle, and he's looking up into the sun. You see, just nice, nice different expressions. And so you could always, always be counting on this is after, this is a playoff game, and uh, St. Louis after, I think he threw five interceptions that day. And the other quarterback is Doug Peterson, you know, who used to be the coach. You know, so he's the coach of, uh, I don't know, what is it called? Philadelphia, I think. Uh, this was a funny picture. It's like, kind of reminds me of the painting, the blind leading the blind. He's walking off the field and one photographer falls, next thing you know, everybody else starts to fall. And there's Tom Lynn on the left here. I, I don't, I think he was, he did not fall. 
This was one of my favorite pictures. This was the night in uh, Oakland, a few days after his father died. This is a Monday night game that he just could do no wrong. You'd throw the ball up and uh, people would make catches that there's no way they would ever make a catch like that again. But he, they were just really giving it everything they had. This is what is, you know, I think Dan will say too, it's one of the, my most favorite football games I've ever been to. And uh, kind of interesting too, because that was, it happened in, uh, I think it was in uh, 2003. And it was a Monday night game. And I, we took a red eye back home and I got home without any sleep, you know, by eight, eight thirty, And I had, I was moving into my new house and I had movers come a half hour later. So I ended up spending my day, you know, I'm, you know, moving after having no sleep, but that was just, that was a great game. You know, the, the gunslinger look, this is him waving to the crowd after thinking he was going to retire the first time, but he ended up coming back. Just full of expressions. It's uh, his nemesis, WhatsApp. This is the one that he was asking me, hey, how you doing? Oh, I did okay. But, uh, he really wasn't doing that, but that's, I like to make that joke. This is him with his wife after setting the NFL passing record in Minneapolis. This was his last pass as a Packer. It was an FC championship game when he threw a horrible pass and it was intercepted. The Giants ended up kicking a field goal a few plays later and the Packers did not go to the Super Bowl, which they should have that year. This was the one picture that had taken the game before that when they were playing Seattle. And this is the one photo that uh, that I won the Dave Voss picture of the year photo and it's in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And last year was uh, voted one of the top 100 NFL pictures of all time. So. It's still one of my favorite photos. And like I said, just a lot of Packer stuff. Interesting. And back, I traveled with the, the team from 1997 till 2008 season. So I went to every one of those games between then. And I had gone to 200, 200 games in a row. And I'm thinking like Dan Powers and Mark Hoffman went to almost as many too. And it was kind of fun because we would... Uh, we could talk about we'd be in San Francisco one week and ah we could see you next week in the, you know Detroit or see you next week in you know New York. It, it was just it was fun because it really got the the livid style because you stayed in the same hotels as the players did and so it was uh, it was a fun few years. I guess it was fun thirteen years I should say. Uh, game in Arizona when it was really hot and this was the case I actually burned my hands from holding the, the black cameras. And this was the NFC Championship game in 2010, the last time the Packers went to the Super Bowl. This was the interception that sealed the, sealed the win for them. And then I think this is kind of funny because I'm at the Super Bowl and I've got it. I always, my tradition always was to eat a Snickers bar. That was my kind of gave me a bit of energy. And I looked at the wrapper and it said, you, it says you could win a ticket to the Super Bowl. And I'm going, I'm at the Super Bowl. So I thought, I thought that was kind of funny. And it's like, I'm already here. And this is the game, you know, the Packers played uh, Pittsburgh. They played very well. I'm glad they won because I did not have very many pictures of them uh, looking poorly. This was the interception that was returned for a touchdown. This was a uh, celebration, Greg Jennings of a touchdown. Jordan Nelson had a great game. This is a touchdown catch. You know, Aaron Rodgers, Jordan Nelson celebrating. Nelson diving in for another touchdown. This is one of those games that I was just really lucky. I was using a 400, 28, 70 to 200 at a wide angle. And the plays always seemed to be coming my direction. And it's a uh, my focus was always locking on. I, I felt pretty lucky from the, some of the pictures I got, you know, that day. Uh, uh, Matthew celebrating the win. 
Nelson celebrating the win. Gatorade dunk. And then uh, the final presentation of the trophy. All right, Steve, that's uh, that's it for the fish. Like I said, when I was going through these pictures, there's so there's so many of them. And at some point I have to go, I'm gonna have to go through and really put together a, my favorite Packer photos because now that I have a little more time, that was one of the things that I wanted to do because I started looking back at my portfolio and I'm, I'm thinking, even on my website, it's like I'm missing so much stuff. And it was a lot of fun just go back to look at my days and in, in you know Florida and realizing that from the years, you know, 1990 to 96 were so important because it's, I was still kind of learning how to do things. And uh, it just, it, it's just, it's, you hate to think that maybe you've done your best work 20 years ago, but I'm like kind of using that as a kick. Maybe I got to pick it up a little bit because I, I think I really did my best work, you know, from 1990 to 1997, 98. But that's just the way life is. And I ended up having back issues from carrying heavy cameras and everything. But I can't use that as an excuse anymore. But it's, uh, you know, looking back at your stuff, it's, life is like that. It's, uh, it's pretty humbling. And it's uh, one, of the, one of the reasons why I kind of wanted uh, to leave my current position. It's because I do have some family obligations with my parents who are getting older. But that this past year, when you, you know, I've worked out of the office every day during the pandemic. And uh, there are times that I'm sitting in the office and I'm the only one there. You know, some, there's sometimes for days, I'm the only one there. And as Joel remembers, just a bustling newsroom with the scanner going off and the, the talk, and it's a noise level that you get used to in the, the, the sound of a quiet newsroom just, was it was horrible, and it was one of those things that, that made me start to think maybe I got it's time to step back and let somebody else, you know, move forward with this type of stuff because it's uh, it, it's it was a strange year just because I like activity, I like people, I like to talk to people, but it was it wasn't there. You know, John Hart came in most of the time, and the weird part for our newsroom, we had an executive editor came in, our city editor came in. And then our, my John Hart, myself, and Amber Arnold, she'd work from home, but she would also come in. So the photo staff was there, but the reporters were not. So it was, it was uh, I guess it's a lot of time to, for self-evaluation and thought that, hey, maybe they're, you know, try something a little differently. I'm still going to be taking photographs. And I just, I had all these different projects I've wanted to work on at once I've get, you know, I want to try to organize my photos a little bit, but then I'm going to start working on some personal stuff, maybe freelance. It'd be nice to do some more Packer stuff if I can hook, hook on with somebody, but uh, that's kind of it. So if anybody has any questions, I can answer that. If not, I'm fine with that too. Steve, yeah. I understand that the reason Aaron Rodgers said he wants to leave the Packers is because you're not going to be on the beat anymore. Yeah, I told him that. I said, you know, it's okay. It's, you know, I, I can understand. I think with his uh, 200 some million dollars, I think he'll be fine. So, <laughs> but yeah, it's, uh, I, 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 I think he'll be there. I'm guessing he'll be back. I think that's- We're going to interject thing. something about Steve. Um, you talked about all those years being on the road and shooting all the games and all that, but um, I know we've all shot football in that, but um, it's one thing to get nice action pictures, but this guy nails like nine out of 10 times the play of the game. And I want you to know, Steve, all those years, I loved hanging out with you. It was very annoying because <laughs> you're hard to keep up with. <laughs> we had a, we had a blast on the road and Steve, you know, you, you learn from the guy and, and share good times. And, um, you know, the funny thing is we'd be like, I'd be at a game and I know how Steve shoots football and I know how I shoot football. And if I don't see Steve where I expect him to be, I'm like, shit, I'm missing something because I, he's getting something on and I'm, I'm not seeing it. So I, it was very enjoyable. And he's, he's like top, top notch. Thanks, Dan. Steve, <clears throat> this is Pete Souza. Um, I was really interested in, the, in the, the, the last comment you made actually about the past year. because I, I was going to ask you about that. 
But you said something that I that I w- w- wouldn't have expected, I guess. I don't know, because if you talk to a lot of the newspaper photographers at, at big city newspapers, since the ease of mobility and transmitting photos, a lot of them never go into the office and they love it. You know, they love not having to deal with the, you know, the newsroom and the, they're, they're, they're just kind of out there on their own literally every day. And you basically just said the opposite of why. And, and that's just, I mean, that just shows you we're all different people. But I thought that was very insightful comment about, you know yourself better than anybody and how you really missed that camaraderie of being in, you know, in a newsroom. I just thought that was really interesting. Yeah, I think it was, it's kind of like, uh an old dog always finding its way back home. It was a comfort level about being in the newsroom. Maybe that was my way of uh, kind of saying, I know there's a pandemic, but maybe there's not because I'm, I'm going into the work office every single day. And I, I, I just needed that for motivation because if I was at working from home and just driving around in my car aimlessly, it just, yeah. I just, I couldn't work like that. No, and, I, and I, at one point in the last year, I don't remember when it was, six months or so ago, I ran into Amber, uh, and she kind of said the same thing, actually. You know, she said it was really odd, you know, you know, pretty much working from home. And I think at that time, she wasn't going into the office, yeah, she as, would, as I recall, uh, is what she had said to me. And, it, and that short of she missed the, the whole newsroom thing, too. Yeah, she eventually started coming in when her kids drove her nuts. She would, <laughs> as an excuse, to uh, I need to get to the office type of thing. And but she would, she was in there more than any of the reporters. I mean, I there are some that I hadn't seen, you know, I haven't seen in a year. It just, it just would not come in. So I guess the question is, that part of it aside, the the challenge of the last year. How how did how do you feel? Um, was it, do you think that was one of the bigger challenges of your career, having to deal with trying to be a photojournalist, you know, in, in, in the midst of COVID with all the precautions that you had to take and so on and so forth? I, I think starting out, it was scary because we didn't, you know, didn't really know what it was, how it would affect you. And we were expected to be out there and work every day. And so I, you know, from the very beginning, I just wore a mask and it was you know, hard to see the comfort levels they're different from everybody. But one of the tipping points also was some of the, the, the very heavy protests we had in Madison. There was a, there was a you know, back in, uh, you know, when I first started out, you would, uh, no matter where you were covering anything, you'd say you were a Scott State Journal photographer and people would, it, it had some respect and people were like, okay, they just back off and let you do your job. And you know, there's times now that I'd photograph people, even for features, and I'd say I'm with the Wisconsin State Journal, and they say, "What is that?" And it's like, "Yeah, I'm, it's a local newspaper." And then some of these protests, there were a few times that uh, that it was the you know all sides hated you. I remember at one point, I mean, it was about 9:30 at night. I'm in the middle. There was a huge protest. There was blocking traffic in the street, and I'm here to photo. I'm in a walking to take some wide angle shots and these people were just really up getting up in my face saying we don't want you here you're not you're not with us you can't photograph us and I was just frustrated and I'm saying you're standing in the middle of a public street I'm not leaving and they were saying well you, we don't you can't take our picture and I, I'm starting to think I'm trying to debate you know first amendment freedom of speech freedom of the press and then I started thinking I'm not going to have a you know a less, you know, teach us lesson to these guys right now. And then they're, you know, I was constantly threatened. I mean, it was, I mean, not just minor things, but physical harm. Every time I went out to photograph this stuff and I started thinking, geez, maybe after, maybe the older you get, you start to think, you know, what happens if, you know, something happens and I try to defend myself and somebody gets hurt and I get sued and I, or if I get hit by a brick, and uh, have you know? Just at this point in my career, it's like I guess I I don't need that type of work anymore. And that's uh, so that was another part that kind of I thought maybe I this is somebody a younger 
maybe somebody younger than me can do something like that. So there were, it was a lot of contributing factors. Plus, you know, some, like I said, my parents are getting older and having to drive them to medical appointments. So all this stuff, all this free time, all this quietness, and a lot of time for self-evaluation. It was a pretty easy decision. And I had told the newspaper ahead of time, you know, six weeks before I planned to leave that I was leaving. And, and then it was interesting. They even let me help them on the hiring process. So they did hire somebody else. I think this person starts next week. I don't uh, want to say who it is yet, just in case things fall through, but it was, it was kind of fun that they let me become involved in the hiring process for my replacement. So, but, you know, the state journal was very nice about the whole thing, which is, you know, I honestly say it is better to, to quit, resign than to get laid off because it's laid off is very different, which kind of interesting thing when I was laid off, you have to fill out, you know, fill all this paperwork out. And when I resigned, I never filled out anything. It's just, I told them I'm leaving and I'm gone. It's like, do I need to sign something? It's like, no, it just, it was very weird. But that's part of the, you know, because nobody's around either, so. Hey Steve, can you talk for a brief minute about your Instagram work? It, it seems to me, I follow you on that, that it, it's a whole kind of different thing than your newspaper work, but it, I mean, is it a kind of a, an escape or respite for you? Um, but I mean, you've, you've committed to it and, and uh, really done some interesting things there. What, what does that do for you, that, that outlet? You know, that's, that's one of the things that I'm, I'm still trying to figure out because it's, you know, my, some of my favorite photographers, Sebastian Salgado, Robert Frank, some of the old, you know, Salgado is a contemporary photographer, but some of, they're just, they specialize in black and white photography, black and white photography. And I go back and forth thinking, okay, I want to do black and white. And then I, I've got some other favorites, you know, Alex Webb. And I think, oh, I, I'm going to do color. And so I still don't know what I'm, you know, so I'm, here I am 50, I'll be 58 years old this summer. And I don't know what kind of photographer I want to be yet. So it's just, it's, it's, it's very, I'm kind of curious if anybody else has that problem because trying to figure out which style they want to really work on. And I'm going back and forth and, it's now I'm back to being color. So it's uh, maybe six months, I'm going to change my mind again. I'm just maybe I'm reading too much into it, studying too much professional work. And so I, I'd, I'd like to think that um, my best personal work is I haven't even started to do it yet. You know, as you know, photography is something you can do quite a long time. So like I said, I'm 58. I, I've got about, I like to think I have 30 more years of photography in me. So I'm going to try to figure out what to do and it should be kind of interesting. So, but yeah, Instagram is a nice, nice uh, venue for that. Steve, I noticed in all of the photos of you before you went to the post Crescent, it looked to me like you had your 180 on that, that was the body that you're in every one of those shots. Was that what it was? <laughs> yeah, the, the Nikon 180 2.8. That was my, yeah, that was, a, that was, was the lens. Yeah. <laughs> I and, saw uh, I ended up one time I was covering in Florida, I was covering a first, first president, George Bush. And I'm at a rally and I'm changing lenses in front of a crowd. And all of a sudden I dropped that thing and ouch. And you know how it is whenever you're in the front of a big crowd, it's like, it's okay, it's fine. You know, <laughs> it's, kind of up. it's knowing that you're like, oh crap, oh crap. And you try to look cool because you don't want to look like, you don't want to react in front of hundreds of people. And I look at that, the filters crack. And the, Fine, it's fine. Put it on my camera, you know. <laughs> Other time that lens, I was covering floods that when I was walking back to my car, then the story I told you about, I had changed lens and I had put it on my photo vest because back then everybody used photo vests. And then at one point I realized I'm up over my waist, my photo vest is oh. I go, oh great. Now that <laughs> lens is underwater. Hold that out. Yeah, there's water in there. So I mean uh. Sent it to Nikon, cleaned it out. You know what? I, I still have that lens. It's a great lens. Cool. <laughs> they, they're indestructible once you get them cleaned out and get the water out of there mm -hmm. and fix the impact damage two or three times. Sweet. Did, did you any have any book projects with, with your dad in mind? Uh, I'd like, <laughs> uh, there's a few ideas I have. There's actually, I'm trying to, 
I'm thinking about working on a Packer book project. I've got an idea that uh, I've been talking to people to try, I'm trying to get some permission from our paper to use the photographs. And my early years from when I was uh, just starting to cover, I, I kept a kind of rough journal of you know, some of the funny stories. Hmm. And as Dan will find out at some point, he's in a lot of them. <laughs> but it's, uh, I was, you know, looking back and I was like, God, that's, you know, we really had some really good times. I mean, I was looking at one story that Dan's bought, Dan Powers is follow, uh, following Favre off to the field and the Packers had lost and Favre uh, just stuck his elbow out, hit Dan's camera and Dan ended up cutting his lip. Ouch. And then we started talking about whether we should sue him. It's like, we can't, we can't sue Brett Favre. Get, there's no chance you're going to win that one. So it's, yeah, I got that on film, a series. I could sue. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I was, that, that, there's, I'm kind of working on that because that, that, that be, you know, that might be pretty interesting. And I'm kind of talking with the paper. This, I think they could probably let me get some rights to the photos. And, and there was, there's some other, you know, other ideas I want to work on, too. So there are some book projects I want to work on, too. As photo editor of the state, Jay, did you make the assignments or were you in between? Because your street experience, obviously, you would want to mitigate some of the ideas that came from some reporters and some desk editors. Were you able to help the photographers as a buffer that way? Oh, yeah, that was I was kind of known as the no photographer. It's like, we want this no, no, can't do it. No. And it's and they got they got the point that the reporters, if they had an idea now, they would contact me. They asked, well, okay, what would be the way to photo? And so we ended up having some really good assignments because we just refused to do bad ones. And uh, the situation that's happening now at the post or at the state journal was ideal because when I left and when I was hired back, there's not a photo editor and the city editors and executive editors, they don't know what we do. I mean, they, they can't, so we self-managed. And so it was as a group of three, we, assignments would come in. We would, our, the most protective thing we had was we never let anybody access to our calendar because we wanted that we didn't want everybody to say, oh, you have time to do something. And so we could do whatever we wanted to. If we needed a day off, we yes. could do it. And it, it, it's a, great situation and i think it's still going to be that way too which is why the person that they, hired, they needed somebody that would fit into the group and the way we had the way we like to put it is like a band only needs one drummer we don't want two of the same type of photographers we need because three photographers is a great number but you got to be three different so they all fit different niches and um we had it it was it was fun i mean it was it was it was really a lot of fun having all that, you know, control what you could photograph and what, what assignments you, you could do. That was part of the beginning of the end for me and Racine was when after years and years, they gave the reporters access to the calendar. Yeah, that's. And yeah, that yeah. was, it, it unraveled after that. And yeah, the, another thing that I'm not a big fan of is a, a push for videos for the sake yeah. of videos. And that's, I mean, that's, that's a whole nother, I can understand it, but I don't want to do that. So, I mean, it's, that's, I don't want to criticize it because that's, it's a, it's a revenue stream, but I, 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 I can't, I couldn't be a part of that. I just, that's not the type of photographer I am. Oops. Hold on just a second. I think uh, Joe has, uh, oh, you need to unmute there, Joe. He's working on it. I got to run. Take care, Steve. Oh. It's been a pleasure. Thanks, Mark. Joe, go ahead. wishes as you yeah, go hey. on. See you, Mark. Bye-bye. Hey, Steve. Um, I just feel like uh, I want to give thanks to uh, where it all started with Meg hiring you. When Meg Thino hired you, uh, you were a great addition. We knew that right away. But you just were a star on the staff. And uh, I just want to make sure I make that clear that, uh, you know, not only was it a great presentation, but I just, I just, I know you better now from your presentation as a great photographer and a great staff member and a great representative of the newspaper. Hey, Joe, the one thing maybe you don't know is I was working at Meg for years before she hired me. Anytime I would see her, I'd, you know, I would 
hey, Meg, when, when took up an opening here at here at EAA? Hey, Meg, where's the opening? And I remember during that Wyoming train wreck stuff, I purposely put all my photographs on the wires so I know she would see them. I'm like, hey, Meg, yeah. And I remember the day she called me and said, uh, Scott's side is, uh, is leaving, you know, after law school, there is an opening. And it's like, oh, I was just, I was, I was the most exciting for, I, I was so excited. I mean, I'm not, I wasn't guaranteed a job, but I, I figured that I was I, at least be in consideration. And I remember spending hours working on a cover letter, working on my portfolio. And then I remember that day I was, I even had bought a house in Appleton, which a brand new house. I, and then I got, you know, I was willing to come to Madison even after on, only owning a home for, you know, 10 months or so. I still remember the phone call. I'm in the kitchen and Meg was, uh, said, yeah, we'd like to offer you the job. The pay is probably not as much as what you're getting in Appleton because at the time Appleton was a union job and uh, they had pretty high salary for my level. And she said, it, it, it'll be at this, it'll be at this small, but you know, you will be raises. And I think, uh, I, I don't think, you know, you, you'll quickly bump you up. And it's like, I don't care. It's not about the money. It's like, I, you know, I'll take it. And I went to Madison and I still owned a house in Appleton. It's like, so it was kind of crappy having to have paper apartment and a house. So, but that wasn't even, I never ever considered not doing it. My whole goal, my whole life was, is to get to the state journal. I mean, the time I was 12 years old, it just kind of took a roundabout way to do it. Right. Steve, I'm going to interrupt here for just a second. And um, I want you to, if you can just kind of hang on, if you guys have other questions for Steve, um, just hang on for a couple of minutes. Um, I just wanted to share one thing and then I'm going to pause, or going to stop the recording for the YouTube channel. And, um, and then we'll come back and you can do some more chats. Uh, so, uh, John emailed me while we were talking, uh, this photo of Al. Oh, you yeah. guys can see that there's Al and Bill Clinton. So I just wanted to share that with everybody so we could see the photo that we were talking about earlier. Cool. And, uh, Steve, back to you. Um, it's, or before, before I pause the recording, I just wanted to say, um, it was, awesome presentation i it was amazing to see you your work from the beginning to uh all the way through uh current times and it, it also made me uh kind of long back for those days in the newspaper when you could open a photo you know, open a few pages and, and see those uh those feature shots then you, you really don't see that much of anymore or uh, it's just uh, it was it was just outstanding, and you can really tell why you have won your uh, the awards that you have um, from the Football Hall of Fame and from Green Bay Packers. And, uh, it's just amazing work, and I really appreciate appreciate you sharing that with all of us. Um, it's been a great presentation, so thank you very much for that. 